So, you think prehistoric animals are cooler than the ones alive today. Listen, I don't blame you. Lots of extinct species were sick. Sucks they're not around anymore. But there's lots of cool animals alive that you're taking for granted that are easily way cooler than their extinct brethren. Exhibit A, the beaver. A seemingly overlooked, oversized damn building rodent. When's the last time you even thought about a beaver? I bet not recently. Well, that's gonna change after this video. So buckle up while I reintroduce you to beavers, tell you about their evolution and how they became so sick. Before we get into it, guess what? Merch. We've got some new merch. Pew, 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 pew. So let me show it to you. Some of them are in the wash. So I'm going to show you a couple of them and then I'm going to put pictures up of all of them. So wait, I'll stand over here. I'm going to stand here. Okay, ready? Becoming human, bitch. The next merch drop obviously has to be some early human shit, early hominin shit. So check it out. Sleeves. So we've got this one all right next. Boom. Add a little color to your wardrobe. Next one. Ready? Boom! To mine. Ha! In the back. Hey! Wait, can you see it? Hey! Check it out! And then the other one's in the wash, so here it is. It's fucking sick. I'm trying to add a little bit of color to the wardrobe. You can get all of this right now for a limited time at lindsaynicole.com. We're setting this up so all orders will be delivered before Christmas. Wait, let me get the details. So the window is today, the 15th, to the 24th. After that, orders will be closed. All orders over 100 will have free shipping. And we set up the window to make sure that all orders will be delivered before the holidays, i.e. Christmas, etc. So check it out. I hope you like it. I'm very excited about it. And these are currently the only clothes that I'm wearing now to the video. As always, we're going to get the general information out of the way. Heard a crack. <laughs> Beavers are a type of large rodent. That wasn't a joke before. They're part of order Rodentia. Big wet rats. Beavers specifically are nestled in a rodent family called Castoridae. There are two species of beavers alive today, the Eurasian and the North American beavers, found in, you guessed it, Eurasia and North America, respectively, and both in genus Castor. For a long time, scientists thought they were the same species. That turned out to not be the case on account of some unusual genetic differences. The Eurasian beaver has 48 chromosomes, while the North American one has just 40. Weird as I don't know what's up with that, but it's definitely enough to make them separate species. Morphologically though, they might as well be twins. The main difference between them is in the snout. In Europe, it's more triangular. North America, it's a bit more square. They're pretty much across the Northern Hemisphere, hanging out anywhere with fresh water and a steady supply of trees. Rivers, lakes, woodlands, flooded meadows. They're not picky. If there's a nearby body of water to fuck up a bit. They're all over it. Actually, my university that I went to, Oregon State, the mascot was a beaver. So I guess I'm a beaver as well but I've never seen one. Despite going to a school with a beaver mascot, I've never seen a beaver in real life. At all, I don't think, ever. So I gotta figure that out. I need to see some fucking beavers. Also, by the way, this video topic was selected by my patrons on Patreon. We do polls to select new video topics. So if you wanna get in on that, check out my Patreon, where we also do live streams and other things. Anyway, the beavers are semi-aquatic ecosystem engineers and are built like so. Their short legs and big webbed hind feet make them excellent swimmers, while their dexterous front paws handle construction with the precision of tiny hands and that iconic tail. Flat, scaled, hairless, and starring in several key functions. It's a steering rudder, an alarm bell when slapped on the water, and sometimes even a prop when they stand upright to carry things under their chin, which is very cute. And their fur is nuts. They have this dense underlayer of like 20,000 hairs per square centimeter. What the fuck? Obviously that keeps them insulated as fuck with this trapped layer of air. It's quite the high maintenance trait, and they groom it obsessively with a split grooming claw on their hind foot that works like a built-in comb. At first, thicker than the hair of a Puerto Rican. Their eyesight underwater is shit, but everything else is pretty solid. Hearing, touch, smell, all good, and their whiskers help detect currents. They also come equipped with transparent eyelids that work like goggles, and valves in their ears and nose that seal shut when they die. Also, their nostrils are set higher on their head than other rodents. Makes sense. To me, this is a mix of traits that make them look like a very cute construction worker. And just like construction workers we know and love, they have power tools. But they're are built into their skulls. Strong jaw muscles anchored on a clearly visible sagittal crest. We've talked about that in the human evolution series. Helps to anchor on really strong jaw muscles. And for them, it lets them chew through hardwood like it's fucking celery. Their iconic orange teeth, which are colored by an iron rich enamel, never stop growing and sharpen themselves as they gnaw. And their teeth extend 
in front of a second set of lips. They have two sets of lips, so they can chew or carry sticks underwater without drowning because they can close that second set of lips and keep the front set of lips open, if that makes sense. And despite the rumors, they don't actually eat wood, at least not the part you'd expect or you think or is rumored. Eat the soft inner bark, stems, leaves, and aquatic plants instead. Wood is strictly construction material. Their digestive system is riddled with microorganisms and worms that help break down this fibrous vegetarian diet. Okay, so that's the basic run of the meal beaver shit. Now we're gonna get into where beavers came from existentially. Beavers didn't just show up looking like the cute wet logs we know today. We know this, evolution is a thing. The beaver's story goes back almost 60 million years, starting not as swimmers, but as diggers. All rodents share a common ancestor that was alive somewhere between 57 to 76 million years ago. And the earliest beaver-like creatures split off about 54 million years ago. These early members of the Castority family were part of a massive and diverse group with over a hundred species, ranging from tiny burrowers to beavers the size of fucking bears. They first appeared in North America near the end of the Eocene in a genus called Agnotocastor. These early forms already had some of the classic beaver traits, large incisors and a robust body. Fossil evidence shows they eventually made their way to Asia and Europe, probably crossing the Bering Strait land bridge when it connected Siberia to Alaska. From there, beaver evolution starts branching into two main lifestyles, the burrowers and the semi-aquatic swimmers. Let's start underground with a genus called Paleocastor, the OG burrowing beaver that lived about 22 million years ago in what is now the American Midwest. Probably looked like a mix between a prairie dog and a beaver, with small ears, tiny eyes, and strong digging teeth. Paleocastor is best known for leaving behind these massive spiral burrows. These perfectly coiled tunnels that early ranchers thought were giant fossilized roots, and they nicknamed them the Devil's Corkscrews. They were as tall as a man and thick as an arm, and wound up into perfect spirals like rotini pasta. Thousands of these have been found across Nebraska, each about six to 10 feet long, carved not by claws, but by dientes. For decades, nobody could figure out why they spiral, maybe to escape predators, maybe to keep out water. The leading theory now is that they helped keep shit cool and humid underneath the dry grasslands. They even had different chambers, some for sleeping, some for rearing young, possibly even bathroom corners. Many have been found in clusters, which are now considered towns. So yeah, Paleocastor is evidence that beavers have been on creative mode for millions of years. They just started underground instead of underwater. And all for the purpose of building a nice cozy home to snooze in. And tinier beavers had already been getting comfortable in the water elsewhere in North America. I didn't look up how to pronounce this. Microtheriomys articulaquaticus. Holy shit. You know, you type it out, but then you actually say it, and it's just great. Microtheriomys a Microtheriomys a uh, a small little guy called Microtheriomys articulaquaticus, the oldest semi-aquatic beaver that we know of, and one of my favorite scientific names I've ever heard of, Microtheriomys articulaquaticus. They had ankle bones that suggest it was already adapted to swimming about 30 million years ago, even though it's still burrowed. But it was actually probably these burrowing adaptations that allowed them to transition to the water pretty easily. You just repurpose their morphological builds. That shit happens all the time. As time went on, the digging line of Paleocastor died out, while their more amphibious relatives thrived, like Dipoides a water beaver alive about 20 to 24 million years ago. Dipoides was a clear cut tree cutter and fossil remains of intertwined cut sticks have been found in association with them. So maybe these were early nesty structures that are the beginnings of lodge and dam building abilities. Isotope analysis shows Dipoides ate woody plants and aquatic vegetation. So we know they were at least cutting wood for the nutrients, but seemingly really taking advantage of what the woods giveth like beavers do today. And eventually some beavers got big. So let's take a trip down Big Beaver Boulevard. Allow me to introduce you to Trogantherium, a giant Pleistocene species that looked like a beaver, but didn't act like one. I say giants. They were really just a heavier version of the beavers today. Not really that much bigger, but still a big beaver on Big Beaver Boulevard. They were found in Eurasia and had powerful curved teeth suited to gnawing bark and roots and unsettlingly long legs that suggest it might've been more of a terrestrial runner rather than a swimmer. Not a fan of that personally. Beavers should be short and stout and that's it. You know, their bones have been found from England to China. Some evidence even shows it overlapped with early humans before disappearing about 40,000 years ago. But a true giant beaver was across the pond in North America, Castoroides, alive from about 1.9 million to 10,000 years ago. They could get to over six and a half feet long. So like the size of a small black bear, pretty sick. Might make you think, damn, Lindsay, you're wrong. Prehistoric beavers were cooler than modern ones because they were bigger. Well, no, actually you are still wrong. Despite their massive, 
chisel-like teeth. There is absolutely no evidence that Castoroides built dams like modern beavers. So modern beavers are still up. By the end of the Ice Age, the mega beavers vanished, along with the mammoths and other Ice Age giants. The lineage that survived was smaller, sleeker, and smarter about wetlands living in the genus Castor, which gave rise to the modern Eurasian and North American beavers we have today. And the beavers of today are sick because of the dams. Building dams as an evolutionary advantage is sick. And the dams that some beavers have built are fucking nuts. We'll get to those in a sec. First, let's go into how dams came to be. Went over prehistoric beaver species, but not specifically the damn shit. So damn shit now. I mentioned Dipoides who has some of the earliest evidence of woodcutting behavior, and some very simple dams or lodges, potentially. On the surface, just a couple bundles of cut sticks. But the significance, the first steps toward beaver behavior that we still know and love today. Beaver behavior, if you will. So the idea goes like this. Dipoides was just doing typical prehistoric beaver shit. Piles up some branches near its burrow, and by coincidence, that starts blocking the stream. Suddenly, the water deepens. Predators can't reach the burrow entrance, and stored food stays accessible underwater through winter. That is a massive evolutionary jackpot. The individuals who kept maintaining those accidental dams survived better and passed down that instinct. Over time, natural selection molded this into full-on architectural engineering. And by the time Castor, the modern genus, shows up, dam building went from sick accident to complex, hardwired behavior. And now, today, beavers are known to be triggered purely by the sound of running water. They can't stand hearing it without patching it up. Probably sounds like nails on a chalkboard to them. Or maybe what loud chewing does to me. Fucking fight or flight response. This behavioral leap probably happened about seven and a half million years ago, after beavers evolved larger body sizes. Bigger bodies meant they could drag heavy logs, move sediment, maintain dams season after season, something their smaller ancestors were too tiny and petite to get their hands dirty for. As Ice Age climates cooled, dam building became even more essential. Deep ponds meant open water in frozen winters, underwater food storage, and protection from both predators and the cold. Those flooded oases helped entire ecosystems survive harsh northern seasons. Now you're probably thinking, damn, beaver dams are sick. I wish I was a beaver so I could build a beaver dam. Well, you're in luck, because it's time for Dam Building 101. How to build a damn good beaver dam. Step one, pick your site, a place with plenty of trees, mud, and serenity. You'll want a shallow stream or narrow channel, somewhere with running water, but not too much current. If it's wide or deep, skip the dam entirely. You just need to dig a lodge into the bank instead. But if the water's too shallow to hide your doorway from predators, that's your cue. It's time to build shit. Step two, obtain wood. Not just any wood, your favorite wood. Scout the area for aspen and willow, the tastiest and easiest to chew. Your strong, bright orange, iron-rich front teeth are the only tools you'll need to fuck shit up on branches and even whole trees, not the trunk. Cut it down piece by piece and drag the logs into the water. If it's too heavy, use the iconic strategy. Grip the stick or stone under your chin. Hold it with your front paws and walk upright on your hind legs for a few steps. For smaller twigs and branches, stuff as many as you can in your mouth. Like I said, your teeth stick out in front of your lips so you can swim with a full load and not gulp any water. Easy peasy. Step three, the foundation. Every good dam begins with a frame. Wedge some big sticks, logs, or even tree trunks across the stream bed, usually at a narrowing or a bend to minimize the length to cross. Roll in stones or packing clumps of soil for stability. The goal is a sturdy low wall that slows the flow, but doesn't stop it entirely. Otherwise your neighbors are gonna be pissed. Property value is gonna take. Step four. Layer shit up. Weave branches and twigs together, lean them slightly upstream. That angle lets water seep through instead of blasting the structure apart. Once it looks decently tangled, like a rat's nest, start plastering everything with mud, leaves, grass, and stones. Plug up gaps, patch leaks, smooth the surface. Beavers use their front paws to sculpt, and their teeth as multi-tools to trim branches and shit. So you're gonna do that too. Step five, seal it. As a pond starts forming behind your new construction home, Reinforce the upstream side. Add more vegetation and fresh mud for insulation. It'll keep the structure flexible, but sealed. If you hear splashing or running water, it means something's leaking. Patch it immediately. A dam in disrepair is a mine in disrepair and is also easy access to predators. So a threat to physical safety and the mind. And finally, maintain and expand. Unfortunately, the nature of dams is that they always need maintenance. What else are you gonna do? You'll repair it year round, usually working hardest in late summer and autumn. This is when conditions are perfect for mud work. Over time, your dam will raise water water levels, flood nearby terrain, and create a self-sustaining wetland. If you're lucky, you'll pass it on to the next generation. Beaver colonies usually do this and just keep building on the work their ancestors left for them. And sometimes those generations go berserk. Yeah. Somewhere deep in the Canadian wilderness, there's a structure so massive it can be seen from fucking space. The largest beaver dam on the planet that we know of. And the reason I wanted to make this video. It's in Wood Buffalo National Park, tucked away in Northern Alberta near the edge of the Birch Mountains. And it is 
Ready? 2,542 feet long. Dude, more than the length of seven football fields. The dam's full perimeter is 6,560 feet. So, enclosing a wetland the size of a small town. What's crazy is it's so remote that it takes days of trekking through bog and swamp to reach it, if you're brave enough to try. The first and only person to pull it off on foot was a man named Rob Mark, who made it there in 2014 after a three-day hike from Lake Clare. The last mile alone took him five hours of trekking through high waist muck. The dam itself is holding back runoff water descending from the surrounding Birch Mountains, forming a pond that's like 750,000 square feet across and about three feet deep. So if you crunch the numbers real quick, I think I got this right when I calculated it. We'll see. Check my math. 2,472 and 26 cubic feet of water. That's such a large amount of water, it doesn't fucking mean anything to me, you know? That's nuts. But let me know if I calculated that right. I don't see how I would have gotten that wrong, but maybe I did. Probably did, actually. No, I probably didn't. I'm gonna believe in myself. I probably didn't. Maybe I did, though. Okay, this is clearly a multi-generational project, like the Cologne Cathedral. Satellite analysis suggests this dam isn't even the work of a single colony, but actually the result of multiple generations of beavers expanding, repairing, and merging their own smaller dams over time. Each family inherited the structure and kept at it, adding new wood, patching old breaches, and extending it further out into the wetland. This is hundreds of beaver years of work. How do I pronounce that name? because I know I'm gonna get it wrong. I've been getting all the European stuff wrong recently. It was first discovered in 2007 by Dutch landscape ecologist Hen Thie, or Jean Thie, I don't know, who was studying satellite imagery from past permafrost research. He noticed a massive line cutting across the wetlands and quickly realized he was looking at damn, a big beaver dam, the biggest beaver dam. The discovery drew global attention, not only because it was visible from orbit, but because no one had reintroduced beavers to the area. This meant these animals were OG to the area, descendants of the region's wild population that had just been doing what beavers do best, shaping the earth around them. Yeah, I think this dam is sick. Earlier this year, I was driving from the Grand Canyon to Zion, going over this big dam, and it made me start thinking about beavers. So me and my friends started looking up, you know, what's the biggest beaver dam? And we found this one and blew my mind. I was thinking, damn, is that bigger than any like man-made dam? But it's not. The Three Gorges Dam in China is way bigger. And you know, there's other dams that are bigger, but this beaver dam is twice the size of Hoover Dam. So that's sick. So anyway, beavers are ecosystem engineers. I said that a couple times. I don't think I've directly said what it means. It's not a metaphor. It's an actual thing. It's like a vocabulary term you gotta learn in any classic biology or ecology class. An ecosystem engineer is any organism that physically changes the environment in ways that create new habitats or resources for other species. Corals do it in the ocean. Elephants do it on land. And in freshwater systems, nobody does it better than beavers. Every dam they build, every tree they cut, every canal they dig, all of it reshapes the environment around them. When a beaver blocks a stream, it slows the flow of water, causing it to add depth or spread out into wide, shallow ponds. Those ponds trap sediment and nutrients, filter pollutants, and store water that can later recharge the groundwater system. Their dams retain enough water to reduce flooding downstream and keep rivers running during droughts. In dry regions, beaver ponds hold moisture way after the last rain, keeping areas nice and green. And during wildfires, those wet pockets can literally save lives and become small refuge zones. But the ripple effects go way beyond the water. When beavers knock trees down, sunlight's able to get through new pockets in the forest canopy. That triggers an explosion of new growth that adds more vibrance to an ecosystem, new food and shelter for birds, insects, amphibians, the dead wood left behind rots, which is great for fungi, beetles, worms, etc. And that is why beavers are not only ecosystem engineers, but also keystone species. Take them out, everything goes to shit. Put them back, the system heals itself. In places where beavers have been reintroduced, in parts of Europe and North America, scientists have documented cleaner water, fewer floods, more fish habitat, and rebounds in species that hadn't thrived there in decades. Beavers don't just live in ecosystems, they create them. They wear many hats, some hard hats. And that is why beavers are sick as fuck. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe Subscribe so you don't miss the next video coming out next week. Keep up with behind the scenes content, vote on the next couple episodes, and check out our Discord server on Patreon. And for now, stay curious. The world has a lot for us to learn. See ya!